Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your second Webpack tutorial and in this video I'm going to show you how to install Webpack and how to bundle JavaScript files together into one file. So by this stage I'm expecting that you've already installed Node.js. If not then head to Node.js.org and download the latest version. So the first thing I want to do if you're following along with the course files as well is check out lesson 2. So I'll say git check out lesson hyphen 2. That's just going to update this index file to remove all those scripts and the comments. Okay, so let's install Webpack. Now the first thing we need to do is run npm init. And what that is going to do is create a package.json file for us so we can keep track of all our dependencies. So this is going to throw up a series of questions that we just need to hit enter to. So the name, version, description, entry point, this is all fine. Um, keywords, author me, and license MIT, okay. That's all fine. This is going to create a package.json file for us right here. So this just has information about our project and it also tracks our dependencies. Now Webpack is going to be a dependency for us, so it's going to keep track of that. Now the way we install Webpack is by saying npm, not up there, down here, npm install Webpack and we want to save it as a dependency. So we say hyphen hyphen save and pass it through the dev flag to say it's a dev dependency, okay? So that's gonna install Webpack and it's also gonna track it right here once it's installed. Okay, so once that's done, you're gonna notice two things. First of all, this node modules folder has appeared magically. That is just everything that Webpack needs to run. So it's installed all its dependencies, etc. And then right over here, if you scroll down, you're gonna also notice this dev dependencies. And this is keeping track of the Webpack version we've got installed. So now we've installed it, we can start using it in our application. Now you'll notice on the right over here, I've gone to localhost 3000 forward slash Webpack playlist. So it's serving up this thing right here. So let's just test it. Let's see, Yahoo. save that. And then over here, we could see that. Okay, cool. So we know it's working. So let's get rid of that for now, save it. What I want to do is create a JavaScript file and link it up to this file right here. So I'm going to right click over here, say new file, call it script 1.js. And then in here, what I'm going to do is declare a variable called message, set that equal to, what should we say, tempest fugit. And then what we'll do is alert that message. So message, that's going to alert. So now for this to work on this page, we need to link it up in the index file. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll say script source equals, then dot forward slash to say the current directory, then it's script hyphen one dot JS. So if we save this dude now, then hopefully we should get an alert on the right. Yep, Tempest Fugit. Okay, so that works. Now, what if I want to split my code up into two different files? And I know that seems like overkill at the minute because there's barely any code here but imagine that we had lots of different code and we want to split up our messages from our alert functions or something like that so let's create a new file let's say new file and call this script hyphen 2.js and in here we're going to say var message equals tempest fugit like so save that and then in script one I want to get rid of that and what I want to do now is alert this message right here which is this in the browser now currently that's not going to work because this is in one script and this is in another and we're only linking to this script in the HTML so what we really want to do is require the use of this script whatever is in here in this file so now we've got Webpack installed, we can do that. Webpack allows us to require all the scripts and bundle them together. So if I say var message equals require, I'm gonna require this file right here, okay? So it's quotation marks, then it's dot forward slash to say the same directory as script one, and we want script hyphen two. Like so, we don't need to put dot js, we can do it if we want, we don't need to. That's just gonna know that this is a JS file, okay? But this isn't done yet. So what we need to do is explicitly say what other script files can require from here. And we do that by using module.exports. 
So we can say, instead of var message, module dot exports equals Tempest Fugit. So now we're exporting this, right? So we're saying whenever another script uses require to grab this script, give them this, okay? And this can be whatever you want. This can be objects, this could be an array or multiple strings, whatever you want, okay? For now, it's just one string. So let's save that. And this still won't work. If we refresh over here, we're still not gonna get that alert. And that's because we've not run Webpack yet. We need to run Webpack in order for it to bundle these files together, okay? Because right now, this is not supported in most browsers. It's not um, a readily available JavaScript function we can use in browsers. So we need to run Webpack, and that's gonna bundle these two script files into one file for us, all right? So let us come down here and say Webpack, then what we're gonna say is script one dot js this is the entry point if you like this is the one which is controlling everything okay and then we want an output which is going to be dot forward slash bundle dot js so if we run that now then what that is going to do is bundle these two together and output them in one file which is now here you're going to notice that bundle dot uh, js right here and at the minute it looks like an awful lot of code just for one little alert but as your applications get bigger and you're using many different requires, you've got many different scripts, it's gonna bundle them all together into one file and output them here, okay? So now, in the index, instead of linking to script one, what we need to do is link to this new file, which has combined those two scripts, okay? So let's say bundle.js, save it, check out over here, now this works, Tempest Fugit, okay? Cool, so what Webpack now allows us to do is create multiple different files to split up our code, if you like, into logical different modules, and then require the code wherever we need it, and output all of the different modules, all of the different JavaScript files into one file at the end, just this bundle.js, okay? And in the index.html file, all we're doing is requiring one script file instead of those five or six or seven files. So we're just requesting something from the server once instead of multiple times. Really cool. And by the way, if that webpack command isn't working, um, then install webpack globally on your computer. Now to do that, just say npm install webpack hyphen g. That's gonna install it globally on your computer and then that should work. Okay, cool. So there we go, that's how we bundle JavaScript together. We're gonna be doing more of this as we go along. So this is just a little bit of an introduction. In the next tutorial, what we're going to do is create a config file for our webpack so that we don't have to start running webpack down here. It does it all automatically for us. So until then, don't forget to share, subscribe and like, and I'll see you in the next video.